some of this head of mine and tried to do something to myself you guys so anyway you guys remember all things on this channel is alleged in my opinion it is for learning teaching it is for entertainment it is for sharing caring loving it is to be informative it is to be it is okay and when i say um entertainment on this channel we do Love and Marriage Huntsville, Potomac, we do all the housewives, we do reality TV, we do reality reality, okay, things that are happening in real life, we do that here, okay, we do, um, so anyway, you guys, I am going to review Love and Marriage Huntsville, um, and it's going to be a quick review, um, it was okay, um, was it nothing, I mean, it was a good episode, it was like almost could be drama but no drama okay i mean it was little drama but you know a little shade here and there but nothing like ratchet it was good it was good but anyway um it starts off with melody and martell they're still in destin miss van comes she's a day later um she comes upstairs mel is getting ready to take the kids on the yacht and um Miss Van was just asking her, have Martell been acting right? <laughs> and Mel was like, yeah, he's been good. He's been, you know, it, I couldn't ask for better. It's been nice. And she said, but he did step out of bound, which he did, and invite somebody else over here. And it was Letitia and Marceau and their children. And she, he said, you know, without asking her, but Mel said, it, it, it's okay, though. And Miss Van was like, how did that go? And Mel said, it went, um, you know, it just went. And she said, we laughed, kiki a little bit, and talked a little bit, and that was it. And, you know, she said, I'm good. And so, Miss um, Van said, well, what do, what do you think about that relationship? And Mel was like, there is no relationship. I think nothing of it, okay? Um, she said that, you know, I can laugh and kiki with you, but that don't mean we're friends. That means I'm cordial. I can be cordial with you. I'm in a good space. You should be in that good space. We can ask how the kids doing, doing this and that, and we can move on. And I get that. So, Miss Van said, well, that's a great place to be, and it is a great place to be with some people, okay? Um, anyway, so you guys... Um, it goes to Marceau and Maurice. Okay, Marceau is picking up limbs around the house and talking about he's clearing space. Okay, whatever, Marceau. Then he turned around and all I saw was crack on the back. <laughs> Pull your pants up, Marceau. Pull them up. I don't want to see no crack. But anyway, <laughs> they sit down. Maurice starts to talk about Kimmy's situation. Marceau was like, Tisha told me. Um, he said, is it for certain? Maurice said, oh, it's definitely for certain. Um, Maurice is feeling a way like, if I had not of, you know, told her to, you know, pressure her so much about giving up her nursing job, she would have the insurance, and then, you know, she would have went on and went and found, you know, they could have found this earlier, and, it, you know, I feel responsible, and Marceau was telling him, look, you cannot dwell on that. Um, who's to say that she would have went anyway? I mean, people would beat themselves up, what if, what if, and I get what Marceau was saying. Maurice is really tore up about this, y'all. This is very touching to me, okay? And I don't believe Maurice, I think Maurice is really 
being tested right now. And the thing that touched me the most with him was, he said, I just got married. And now it's like, it's like somebody's being taken from me. And, and he just, he was in a bad space. Um, he says, Kimmy, um, acts like it's not there. That's her coping mechanism, Marty's. Um, I get it. I'm a nurse too. We do that. We cope. We deal. We fix. Um, Maurice is a fixer. He tries to fix Kimmy, but he can't. This is something that is going to be tested, tried, and true. Got to keep the faith. Got to keep yourself uplifted. Not only that, you have to talk about your feelings as well. And that, you know, talking to your brother was a great outlet. Okay. So they talk about it. Uh, they, you know, embrace. They, um, you know, cried out. And it was a touching situation. Loved it. Even though I loved it. I know some of y'all going to be like, ugh. But I love that. Okay. Um, the realness. That's what we asked for. The realness. Not all this ratchet stuff. This is real life stuff. Okay. So then it, you know, flips back over to Destin. The kids are loading up. They're going on the uh, yacht. And Mel, and you know, everybody's getting on there. It's a very nice yacht. And Mel asked Martel, Is this the first time you ever been on a yacht? And he was like, Uh, yeah. And she's like, Well, welcome. And, you know, Martel, being a narcissist that he is, it touched his little ego. And he was like, it's not like I can't go on one. It's just that I've, all, I've never been on one. And she's like, what that supposed to mean? I just said welcome. You know, narcissists, honey, they, they, they touch it. When you're trying to touch that ego, like, you're trying to be better than me. Uh, oh, he gets he gets a little touchy. He, then he goes in his confessional, confessional and says, you know, I, I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Mel throwing jabs. <laughs> she didn't throw no jab right there. She just said welcome. But anywho, um, they're talking. A storm comes up and Mel is kind of upset because she's like, you know what? If this storm is, I hope it doesn't... Um, ruin my day, you know, because I promised the kids, she said, I don't want them to have a failed promise, and you know, and this and that. Uh, and, um, so she, you know, they sit down, they wait it out. So they're sitting around talking, and Miss Marlene was, you know, had her a couple tipsies. She always looked like she tipsy, but she was tipsy. And they're sitting around, and Martel, you know, they were talking, and um, Mel, uh, you know, was asking Miss Marlene, how was it, did she communicate with her kids, you know, as they were growing up? How was the communication? And uh, was it, um, and do you think it was um, effective? Whew, Chad, Miss Marlene being... Miss Marlene, I work two jobs. I work my A out to raise them. Um, and a lot of times they were there, but they knew what to do. If they didn't, I would whip, I would beat their behind. I'm sorry, Miss Marlene. I am sorry. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know, my mama worked hard. My daddy worked hard. And to be honest with you, we still had to be raised, Okay. Um, we still had to be kids. We still were kid minded. So when a child doesn't have structure, doesn't have a way, an outlet to communicate, you best believe they're going to do it in some other way. Um, he was never taught, Martel and his siblings were never taught how to communicate effectively to resolve their issues. Okay. Because their mother didn't teach that. She just said, you do wrong, I'm going to whoop you behind. But you didn't effectively communicate what happens when somebody does wrong. You didn't have, you didn't communicate that. So you just start, you know, latching in. Y'all know better. What do they know better? What? Why, why should they know better if they're not being taught any better? My thing of it is, if you know better... Well, how do you know they know better? Did you ask them? 
Why did they do it? Or did you just go straight into them and start whooping their behind? And then they start getting this narcissistic, um, a narcissistic um, attitude as they grow up because that's where it develops from, you know, um, a coping mechanism. Then they grow up thinking the world owes them everything and they get touchy feeling. They want to be controlled and they learn how to manipulate all kinds of levels to narcissism okay some narcissistic people you can marry and you just know how to deal with i think you know of course mars reese is a little nar narcissistic in his ways but he's one of those narcissists that you level one you can you can live with him okay he he basement narcissist he's not elevator yet he, he's just there, okay? He has tendencies. Let's put it that way. But Martel does, he's very narcissistic. Um, he gets very offended, can't take jokes. He takes everything personal. And Mel uh, strikes that in him, okay? So, yeah, so it's amazing to me that you got two different parents who raise their children in two different ways, right? Like, you got one parent that teaches um, how to be effective communicator, how to express themselves, and allow her child to express who she is without being ridiculed or beaten. Right? Right. Okay? Um, it's amazing how... You know, one parent does one way and the other does another. And, and you can tell it in the adult life. Mel is very communicative. She very she communicates very well. She uh, gives her children time to express themselves. She let them um, talk and get their frustrations out. She listens. If she can't get it across effectively, she does what normal same parents do therapy on how to communicate how to be a better, better parent Martel doesn't know how to communicate he gets frustrated when he tries to communicate and nobody understands him he takes everything personal because all his life his mom has just took it personal on him because he's never been taught how to communicate effectively he's never been taught how to have an outlet to express who he is and how he is and why he's feeling so he's been holding that in and so the best thing for him to do is if i'm going to um uh, i'm going to do this i'm going to do that the way i want to do it i don't want nobody questioning me right isn't that something but you guys you got to understand it's all in the parenting you got one parent who tells their child you can do and be anything that you want to be. Then you got another parent telling their child, you know, if you do this and it ain't right and it's not in the um, bylaws with me, I guarantee you I'm going to whoop your behind when you get home. And then the kids do wrong and they don't even know they're doing wrong because you had, this, you had to communicate what wrong is. Then they grow up to be these kids and you still being passive aggressive with your son. This is absolutely crazy to me. But this is how parenting is. A narcissist would take it to the extreme. And I hate to say it, Miss Marlene, you created that monster. You created the monster. Mm, mm, mm. It's sad. But anyway, they go on. They after the you know little tank is driving the yacht, and after um they have their you know, fun time, Martel arranged dinner, him and Mel sit down, and um, they begin to talk. He wants to know what did he do before it even got to the point of him cheating, that, um, <laughs> which is stupid, but I'm going to entertain it, okay? What did he do before it got to the point of uh, cheating? Why? What? What was um, the issue with her? And she was like me. You really don't know. You really act like you don't know. And um, he said, "No, I want to know." And she was like, 
Martell. She said, I, this is not the place, time, or the atmosphere to be discussing that. And he said, I know um, I, I have asked you, you know, it was childish of me to, you know, to step out. I apologize because, you know, to step out because there are things that you weren't doing. Another narcissistic way, um, there were things that was not being done, and um, I took it out on you. I should have known better. Um, I should have um, never done that. And if I had a thousand times, I would apologize to you um, over and over because you didn't deserve that. Okay. And I, he said it was childish on my behalf to expect you to do that and then step out. It, it was our marriage was a beautiful thing. We had a beautiful thing. We had plans. We had um, plans for our children. For us, we were the perfect couple. And now I messed that up. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. Not only did you mess it up, you messed up your whole life. You got a whole child. You got a whole jacked up business arrangement. So, yeah, yeah, messed it up, bro. Yeah, messed it up. And Mel says she receives it, she understands it, and she accepts it. And they go out back to the place. They get ready to leave. Um, Mel said... You know, I would love to do this because one day I'm going to meet someone. You're going to meet someone. We both might consider getting remarried. We need to be able to get along with the people that we date um, or marry. And maybe one day we can all do this together as grown adults. And Martel was like, I agree. And Mel was like, Martel is not ready for her to date. Martel would act a prom fool. She asked. Uh, Martel, are you 100% healed? He said, I'm not 100% healed, but I'm healed enough to move on. That means if she brings a man around him, that fool going to act the fool. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Okay? So, Love and Marriage Huntsville was good. Um, you guys tell me what you think. Um, uh, share the video. Comment below. Um, the move fund is still going. It's dollar sign Teresa Lindsay 12 please consider giving and um i will be back later with more commentary bye six o'clock you guys six o'clock